Vivian Lalala, founder of Boa Foundation, founder of Aniwa.co, co-founder of both of them actually with Rudy Randa, another great friend of mine. It is such an honor and a pleasure to hear you speak always, Mama. Every time you open your mouth, I feel like my life gets better. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's just, just being real. Um, so we've just been talking um, and very excited about this uh, this event that we're doing this weekend, this event that you guys have put together, this online digital annual gathering. So just to give people a little bit of context, um, Aniwa is what, a gathering of 40, 50 indigenous elders from all over the world that come together to pray, that come together to share their culture and their ceremonies with participants that are like, you know, you know, that range from all kinds of backgrounds that have um, all kinds of reasons to be there. You know, some people are looking for, you know, a structure of that, that fits with their way of praying. Some people are just there because they've just heard about indigenous cultures and they want to understand and some people are there because they have a long-standing practice and under like you know have worked and have long-standing relationships with these elders that we have at Anua. and um it's just it's such a freaking powerful gathering um you know for the past two times i think it's happened around my birthday which is so nice because i mean like it's the best freaking birthday party in the world um but uh yeah, this time it's happening online. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, Vivian, I think my first question is, how do you think that's gonna work? Hello, Una, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and also to listen to you. Um, I'm sorry about, I have some background noise here. Um, how I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work is just wonderful because of course spirit knows no physical boundaries. The spirit is omnipresent everywhere. You no, know? and I know around these things there has always been you no know, um, technology doesn't mix with sacred ceremonies, cameras, none of that does, you know. Truly is not a place for that. However, uh, due to the current times in the world right now. The elders were like, you know, we need to get on with the program. We can't gather live, but the world needs this wisdom more than ever before now. There's yeah. so many people in fear. There's so many people in despair. And so the elders were guided and said, you know, we're going to have to break the rules. We're going to have to share this in this way because it's an urgent situation. And the first time we did something like that was for the solstice this year, uh, the Mayans, did a, a ceremony with their sacred fire and it was so powerful i felt like i was there right next to them i could feel all the spirits here all around the house it was really really beautiful a lot of people received profound healing and then we had a, a mama retreat online for one week with which participants couldn't even see the mamas they were only sending voice notes yeah and it was Oh, I heard about that. One of my friends did it and she said that she had one of the most profound experiences of her, of her life as she was doing it online in LA while you guys were in Mexico and it literally transformed her whole life because the, she was hearing exactly what she needed to hear from, from you know, the messages that were coming through to the mama. Exactly. And so that's how it's going to go. Can you imagine now we have, so now it's going to be different because uh, before we did this a couple of times just with one or two elders now we have all we have 13 elders that are going to be praying and doing ceremony in their own communities so all of them are going to be doing ceremonies in their own communities for these four days while each of them presents individually their own activity and their own ceremony but all of the others will be holding space for the participants to receive the healing and the tools and everything they need to create the change that is needed in their own lives and of course to connect to be able to connect to the earth to the elements to the invisible world i'm so excited it's going to be amazing it's like a, con a constellation of prayer it's like bing, 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 this constellation of prayer that's going to be um very very powerful i'm sure i'm gonna, i still kind of find it really weird that it's going to be online but i'm totally open to it like I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well i mean i know that i've participated in some of your um, like some of Aniwa's talks with the elders and things like that. We've been fundraising on Zoom and 
it's it's always been really really beautiful like it always brightens up my day in, in such a profound way it just reminds me of what's real so this is i think the big thing about like when i feel kind of you know weird sort of saying the word indigenous and talking about these guys as indigenous elders like i know they're indigenous but indigenous just means being of a place and these guys are like from all over the world and there's you know I'm part Mapuche and I don't know if that qualifies me as being indigenous or not indigenous and like, so it's, for me, it's just about truth. It's about actual wisdom that these guys have about the way that energy moves and about the way that nature um, has a rhythm and the way that we can kind of remember how to be in greater harmony with ourselves and with our communities. And I think that essential truth is beyond identity politics. I don't know what you, what you think about that. Cause I know that, that it's, it's, it's a, it's a topic, you know, and right now it's like indigenous, not indigenous, like it's like a racial thing. It's not a racial thing. It's like just being of a place. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. People ask us this question so much, you know, in the term, cultural appropriation, what is the meaning of that, no? So for me, we see in the Amazon, for instance, the biggest, most prominent leaders, they're doing the most incredible work with uh, <clears throat> outside in the world, bringing the message of the Amazon, you know? You have Benki Pianco, who is, you know, who speaks at the UN, who won the UN Equator Prize for his environmental work, who is really, has done so much for the world. Everywhere he goes has planted over 2 million trees. And uh, from the Ashaninka tribe, which was one of the only tribes in the Amazon that never lost their culture, his mom is white, but white, pale white. Yeah. You know, she lived in the Amazon with her family and uh, she moved to the Ashaninka community. You know, who is gonna tell this woman she's not indigenous? She's right. been living in the Ashaninka community for 50 years or 45 years, I don't know. And uh, she lives a completely indigenous life. She comes from a white family, but how, how does that matter? Nina was mom, Nina Wapaidamata. She, Nina was mom is indigenous, his dad is white. Chief Nishiwaka, also half white, no? And uh, for me, I'm married to an indigenous man here in Mexico from the Yoremi people. And uh, we live a, a life that is honoring the elements. No, we wake up, we go to the beach, we leave tobacco as an offering to the sea every day before we start our day. And we live honoring, living offerings to our garden, to our altar, praying with our water every time we drink it. No, and sometimes, I heard people ask me, wow, but that's not your culture. Yes, it's not. But spirituality is for everyone. We are all children of the earth. No, we are all, some of us, many Westerners were indigenous in a past life and today came into this life to be bridges and to fight for the preservation of indigenous culture. And in the same way, you know, we've been in communities um, I've been in a pilgrimage in the Wirrarika community with our elders and there was one elder there crying and I said to him, what happened? And he said, I'm looking at you, you're here dancing, coming to these pilgrimages every year, honoring my culture more than my own children do. My children don't want to know anything about this culture. It makes me really sad to see the people from other cultures appreciate it more than my own children. And we've seen this in the Amazon, you know, in indigenous cultures there, after they started having festivals every year, receiving Westerners. The children that wanted to go study out in the city, wanted to leave, all of a sudden now they want to study to be spiritual leaders because they realize that their parents and have been traveling out into the world and have all of these people that love them, that come to learn from them. And so in the same way, there are other people that are indigenous that are renegating their culture, embarrassed to say that they come from that culture or even lost their, their practices, their traditions and are, some are killing people, some are fighting, some are, so I believe, you know, I won't go around telling people I'm an indigenous woman, but I believe that being indigenous is a way of life. 
It's how much we can honor all that is sacred, the sanctity of life, and live in harmony with our Mother Earth. No, it's like, what are we doing in our day-to-day -day lives to honor, to give back, to live sustainably, to, to consume just the necessary that we need to live? Right. And what is our reciprocity? Everywhere we walk, what are the footsteps we leave behind with, with, with the earth and with our brothers and sisters? How can we say we're living spiritually, spirituality? If we look at somebody else and we say, oh no, you, you are not from my kind, so I won't talk to you. Or you're not worthy of coming where I am because you're not of my kind. You know, yeah, and I need to you pray with me, which is like the really crazy thing. Exactly, like, yeah. exactly. We met a Lakota chief that told us actually that spirituality is like the teepee. There are many poles, but all of them intersect at the top, at the same place. And so there are many ways. There is not one universal way. There are many. And, you know, each culture have a different name for God, but we only have one God. And every single one of us is a part of him, of this magnificent energy, of this great mystery. And to him, we are all the same. He has no distinction. He, she has no distinction of her children. Even the children that are falling and, and making mistakes all the time, they are always forgiven if they open their hearts and with humility ask for one more chance. And so prayer is for everyone, spirituality is for everyone. However, we need to walk a straight line and we need to walk in alignment with what we pray for. Yeah. No, we can't just pray and ask for something or pray when we need something, give me this. And then in our lives, continue to live in a completely contradictory way or, yeah. or pray for unity but speak only of separation or, you know. And the, I, I think, you know, it's, you're hitting on some really, really important points. And I feel like, you know, in many ways, I've kind of been in the middle of this conversation because I'm half indigenous. And so that kind of somehow qualifies me for some kind of POC something uh, that is ephemeral and, 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 and weird. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's a, a profound acknowledgement of all the wrong that was done, the cultural genocide, the people genocide, and, and, and the continuing genocide of the indigenous people of the Americas and of many other places in the world. So, I mean, it's like this really delicate balance. And I think that the, there, I, I feel like for me, Aniwa, the really beautiful thing about it is that it's not really about indigenous, it's about wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it's about ways to connect in truth and authentically to nature and to spirit and to prayer and to truth and to like you know the the and to a greater understanding of the living science that is nature and the living science that is you know the scientific study that indigenous people have had for thousands of years of trial and error and so that's something that i really feel like you know there's people don't don't feel like there's like cultural appropriation when people go into yoga exactly you know what i mean like what's that about like is that not a cultural appropriation no it's a system that works it's an incredible system that is very very ancient that has a profound understanding of energy moving in the body of uh, like all of these things and people everywhere get on their yoga mat and some teachers are better than others and that's exactly the same i feel like with you know the the, the teachings that I've, that I've received at Aniwa when I've been able to go. And, and um, that's something that I really feel like cannot be stressed enough. It's like, just like you have your meditation practice, just like you have people undervalue, massively undervalue, you know, the wisdom and the understanding that comes from people of the, like the Mamos, like the Ashaninka, like the deep understanding of, healing of frequency of you know quantum physics of nature of agriculture like these are these are systems of understanding that are of a particular place and right now when we're so disconnected from our environment when we're so disconnected from one another like what better way to just reground than to hear the songs and the sounds and the thoughts and the, and the and the offerings of the Aniwa elders that are going to be all talking 
all holding ceremony, all holding their meditation, their concentration um, for this one event that is in two weekends, right? It's going to be this weekend and then Halloween time. Right. And so that also follows the cycle of the moon, right? So we're going from new moon, which is no moon, and then, or no visible moon, and then we're going to full moon. And that for me just speaks volumes about the cultural integrity of Aniwa, you know, if we're going to go back to that, of like, you know, following the natural rhythms of time. This is like one of the great teachings that we can learn of people that are of the earth, you know, everyone. Absolutely. I just wanted to comment on what you said, you know, about all the massacre with indigenous cultures. Nothing we can say, nothing in the world can justify the injustice that these people went through. You know, for me, it really hurts me deeply, deeply in my heart to see that still today, you know, the situation of indigenous people in the Amazon have their territories invaded, burned exploited by our own government the situation of native americans in the yeah. u.s you know the reservations being fed canned meat without access to organic food many without access to clean water nothing in the world can justify that and that is completely uh absurd really and what we do in aniwa is work to to we work at the boa foundation which sponsors aniwa work directly with indigenous leaders to hear from them what it is that they need. And then we'll go and fundraise for them, for their projects, for their cause, to help these communities, you know, to, to, we believe always in an exchange. So they're exchanging their knowledge with us and how can we reciproc reciprocate right. like that, you know, with, with projects, with financial support for causes that benefit the greater good of the community. And uh, in, in relation to that, I can't make up ever for what happened to these cultures. But what I know is that I was indigenous in another life and many people that in this life weren't born indigenous were born to be bridges to merge these both worlds. And I know that we can't correct what happened in the past, but I know that the future is in our hands and we are gonna be the children that are gonna write the new story, the new future. So we can either propagate the trauma and, 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 and feel it more, or we can change the course of history. And, and the same way there are bad Western people, there's also bad indigenous people that kill other people, that fight and that create more violence and chaos in the world. But there are good people everywhere. And so if we can gather all of those good hearts and come together as one culture, putting aside our colors, our creeds, just like the rainbow prophecy says. Yeah, isn't that an indigenous prophecy, by the way, that people yeah. from many tribes of different colors and creeds yeah. come together and bring light back into the world? That's, that's so true. Exactly. It was spoken in the Cree, it was spoken in Hopi and many other Native American cultures about this time which we're facing today, where all the forests would be burning, the rivers would be dying, the oceans would be empty of fish, and all the people yeah. would be fighting. And then the eighth fire would be lit and the new people would arise coming together as one great rolling rainbow spreading peace and standing and healing everywhere they went we are at that time we are at a time that we need to put aside our differences and come together because if we can embody peace in our own lives in our own relations how do we ever expect our people to be respected how do we expect the world to have peace right. if we can have peace with our own community with our own surroundings, with nature. So this for me is what it means, no? To unite, it's what it means. And for me, cultural appropriation means taking, taking something from a culture without having permission to do so. Taking sacred designs and selling them. Taking like music Zara, and taking them. like, you know, like you know, taking. that you're like, you're making this out of poly and this is made by, women in appalling conditions and this is contaminating the rivers and polluting the thing and it's and it doesn't buy it's like what is this and you're using sacred and ancestral designs 
and then people great? wear it and think they look cool. It's like oh, exactly, or take a headdress. You know, yeah. how can you take oh, a headdress yeah. or a sacred piece that one goes through years of initiation to have the honor of being bestowed that by another chief? How can you just take that and desecrate it? This is absurd. But I think in the Western culture, we lost the meaning of the word sacred. You know, right. the sanctity of life, the sacredness of the waters. How can we pollute our, the very waters that we yeah. drink? And it's the same with yoga. Yoga is not cultural appropriation, but nobody can be a yoga teacher in a week. You know, mm -hmm. nobody can learn the philosophy of yoga in a week. So anybody that says they are a yoga teacher in a week, I feel is the same as someone deciding that they're now a medicine man or a medicine woman after just being to, to, to the forest yeah. once you know, or did a two week dieta. I think it's all the same as the culture of the magic pill. I think everything is available for everyone if we have the respect, honor and humility to go and truly learn. If we have someone, an elder that is willing to teach us, we go and truly learn and establish that connection with the elements first before we want anything else, no? <laughs> Absolutely, that was one thing that came to me so strongly yesterday. I was just lying down on the floor and I was kind of thinking about all of the things that are going on in this world right now and all of the ways in which it's confusing and disorientating and, and, and it kind of throws me off my center sometimes even though I work really hard to kind of keep centered, but you know. It's, it's tough. It's a really, really tough time, uh, like a deeply traumatic, tough time. And the, it was just like this voice came through and it was like, just learn, learn how to take care of the seeds. And by the seeds, we mean like, you know, the seeds of wisdom, the seeds of love, the seeds of understanding how to do plants, you know, how to go back to basically what's real, like what's actually really learn it learn it really well so you can pass it on that's all you need to do you don't need to fix the world's problems you don't need to um save anybody the, no like let go of all of that just learn just study study it learn it well so that you can pass it on it's it was an amazing moment i'm so glad to hear you say that yeah my favorite quote of all time is one by alan watts that says the meaning of life is just to be alive Everyone rushes around in a great panic, thinking they have to achieve anything beyond themselves. And it's so true in this lifetime, the only thing we need to worry about is ourselves. Whenever we are in peace with ourselves first, honest with ourselves and in peace with all our relations, this is when we know we are in the good track. When we are too worried about everything that is happening outside, about every wrong that our neighbors are doing, we are failing to see, to point the finger that is pointing out, there's three pointing back at us. What are we doing? No. And so this is what we learn at Aniwa. This is what we learn from these elders that come from all these cultures all around the world and all of them carry the same message. The way out is love. Love is all we need. Love for ourselves, love for the planet, love for our surroundings, compassion, understanding, you no, know, for all our brothers and sisters. Every single one of us are here on a trial and error mission. You know? Yeah. Love and care. I feel like that's one thing that I really, and particularly recently, I went to a, a TV meeting for the first time, and that was a really powerful. Because um, I've I've worked with the with Radhika before with, with the same medicine in the in the prayer ways, but I went for the first time to a Native American church style kind of uh, TP prayer and. I was completely blown away by the level of attention to detail. There is so many, like, so many layers of care that need to go in to, and it's basically for me, it was like, wow, this is a university of how to take care of our world and how to take care of ourselves and how to take care of each other. And this is, this aspect of care has been coming through very very strong whenever I'm like you know the, we did a chat with the mamas the other day and always with everything with the ceremony how you take care of the altar how you take care of the, it the care because love is one thing love is a feeling love I mean people say love is a do word but ultimately like the inspiration to love you know we can all have that without actually doing anything about it and the aspect of care like that's the bit that really fascinates me how do you take good care you know Jim Cameron, actually, in, when we were out in, 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 in Hawaii um, studying for Avatar, um, he said something that really kind of stuck with me. He said, um, there are two kinds of people in this world, the takers and the caretakers. 
And I was like, whoa, I don't know if it's as simple as that, Mr. Jim, I'm going to sit with that, but it really affected me. I thought that's such a good way of, to put it. And I feel like, you know, how do we become greater caretakers right now at this time when we really have to take care of our lives, of our work, of our, each other, our communities, you know, in the face of total annihilation and disintegration and demolition and like what is going to happen with our societal structures? But how do we take care of each other in the process? How do we take care of our garden in that way? The third piece is discipline. That's uh -huh. Is the love, is the care, is the discipline to keep doing, to not giving up, to controlling the negative mind that wants to judge, that wants to despair, that wants to go into fear, but to bring that back to that love, to that care, to that prayer. The prayer is the strongest stuff that we have to hold ourselves up. Yeah. Because when we're praying, we have help from the elements, from a million spirit guides that are willing to work with us. You now, if we act accordingly and if we pray. So I think discipline is also very important in the way we live, in the way we speak, with our thoughts, with our actions in every moment. You no, know? because it's very easy to just despair and be lazy and just spend the rest of our lives eating on the sofa, watching the world collapse and just talking bad about it and feeling disempowered. But it actually takes courage and discipline to get up and say, you know what? I'm going to implement the changes in my life at least. The world may be collapsing outside, but what can I do as a little end? How can I contribute to create those magnificent empires that ants create together? One single ant cannot do that. That incredible technology of moving things around and creating all of those intricate structures. They have to work together, taking leaf by leaf. Thing. And this is us, humanity. We have to stop blaming outside, but we have to say, how am I going to make efforts? How am I going to research everything in my house that is highly pollutant to the earth? Starting by not ever taking a plastic bag again, a straw, a water it's bottle. Air conditioning behind you. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's an eco one. It's pretty impossible to, to live without air conditioning here, but we're getting solar panels here very soon. Yes. Which I hope. And none of us are perfect. We live in the city. We, I have to travel a lot for my work for anyone. You know, none of us will ever be perfect. Not even the indigenous leaders that is very easy for them to plant trees over there. Sometimes they're harder for them not to consume products. They're highly toxic, chemicals. Everyone is doing, we are all doing what we can. We can't be overwhelmed and try to be perfect. This will never be, but we can, what we can do is do our best. And uh, with little things, you know, and starting to erase things from our day-to-day -day life that are obsolete or that, you know, if you eat meat, you don't need to eat meat every day. You can eat, eat meat once a month is more than enough to have, you know, or whatever. It's just little Hunt your things. meat. Hunt yeah. it. Hunt your meat. <laughs> exactly. Do you have the guts to kill an animal? If you do have the guts to look into an animal's eye and kill it, you'll yeah. have the honor to eat that meat. But don't go to the supermarket and buy a bunch of steak and let it go off in your fridge, you know? Exactly. Or it's know where your clothes come from. It's, it's infinite, you know? I'm not going to give a, a lesson on, on sustainability, but it's very easy for us to inform ourselves now that there's yeah. so much information available. And, and I mean, there's so much information available, but just on the, on the subject of meat, there's also like an immense power, benign power of cattle to turn the soil in a very specific way if you do holistic management. You know, there's this absolutely revolutionary and very controversial climate figure called Alan Savory, who I love, who I don't agree with on everything, but he's, he's seen and he's proposed and he's made work like these very amazing, sustainable, regenerative cattle management practices that are like so inspiring to me. So it's, you know, it's, it's more about how we do things, right? It's not just what we do, it's how we do things. So I just want to ask you about the price because I saw the price uh, on the Aniwa website and it's, it's pretty pricey to join. So can you just explain if there's any, if there's like wh where the money's going to, first of all. And um, secondly, if there's any way that people that can't afford it, you know, how, how does that happen? And then thirdly, I think, you know, on the subject of like, you know, the sacred and things like that, like how, 
you know, a lot of indigenous cultures, at least the ones that I've learned with, have no way, like you can't accept money for ceremony. Like you can't pay for ceremony. You can't pay for the sacred. So how do you resolve those questions in, in, in your policies? I'm sorry, I have a little background noise here for talking. <laughs> so absolutely, you can't pay for the sacred. There is no price. How can the sacred be sold? No price in the world, not even a trillion dollars could buy something sacred. And absolutely not. We don't charge for ceremony at all. What we charge, the price is for the logistics that it takes to create the event. You know? So for instance, for the online summit, we had to send camera people to elders' communities to film them in, in remote communities. Others had to go people there to help them use the technology, to translate, to subtitle, to pay somebody to, to run the whole transmission. It may seem easy to transmit something online when we work with Zoom, but it's really very hard when we're doing an, a six hour transmission a day with uh, live and pre-recorded. Tell me that I've done a few of these events and it's always like, mm, oh God, wait, wait. Yeah. But for us, the most important thing, the ethos of Aniwa, we're rooted in reciprocity. For us, it's about giving back always to the earth and to the elders. Many people think that these elders have the obligation to teach us for free because it's sacred. But these people also have needs. They have families. They have to eat. You know, when they come to Aniwa gathering, the elders from the Amazon sometimes, it takes them a whole week just to arrive there. You know, people ask us, why do you charge? And once Benki responded to a people, to a person, and he said, do you think we can walk all the way from the Amazon here? <laughs> or how are we meant to get to the United States? We need flights, we need food, we need to leave our work back home. And for us, you know, Usually in cultures, it's not that uh, you can't give a monetary exchange. You can and you should, but it shouldn't have a price. It's a volunteer, no, an energy exchange to balance the work. Back in the day in reservations, you could bring a chicken or you could bring a whatever food, no, and give the road man or the medicine man and like that. It was fine because you didn't need money to survive. But nowadays, People need money to survive, to feed their families and to go. So um, also for us to honor the energy that that person is giving us, why should we expect somebody to just give us all of those sacred transmissions and healing and work all night long to heal us and not give them anything back? Now we can give whatever we can. In the case of Aniwa, there is a cost because there is certain logistics and a team that needs to work to make this possible. However, we always have, which is really important for us, is the scholarships for people who cannot afford. Anybody also with an indigenous card can apply for a scholarship for being indigenous. They can they have access to the event for all the natives that are registered. And uh, for anybody, that has any financial issues, just write to us, let us know your story, let us know why you want to join and we'll be more than happy to accommodate you. And uh, it's our pleasure. The, the point of this, you know, I don't have a salary, my business partner doesn't have a salary at Aniwa. The point of this organization is to spread healing, is to spread love and really for us all to be able to co-create the world that we dream of living in, which I'm sure all of us have the same dream. Yeah. We, every single one deep down inside, even if sometimes it's buried under layers and layers and layers of trauma and anger, deep, deep down inside in our hearts, all of us want to feel loved, safe, accepted, protected, live with our families, you know, and have shelter, have food. And I think... And every, belong. I think belong. Belong, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. Belong. It always strikes me that, you know, like the, the first avatar, um, you know, at the end of the film, everyone is cheering for the blue people. Everyone in the cinema and the audience is blue. You know, there's nobody there that's like rooting for the technocratic, extractivist, machine, kind of earth pink people, like they call them in, in Pandora. Like nobody's, nobody's working for those. Nobody's rooting for those guys. Everybody cheers when the, you know, when the natives essentially like kick them off the planet, except the few that are working together, right? That are collaborating, that have adopted a certain amount of wisdom. So, 
it always strikes me that in the film, everyone's like, you know, everyone has this understanding that about who, like what the, what the important things in life are, how beautiful that can be. Everyone has this understanding, you know, and everyone identifies with it. It's just that we've had so, we have a constant attack of delusion and distraction and fear, 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 fear. So yeah, that's, that's good, man. I'm really, really excited about this weekend. Um, is there anything else that you want to say or that you feel like is important to, to kind of mention um, right now? I mean, I'm looking forward to, I've got a, a few things that I, I feel like would be great, but I think I'm gonna save them for a conversation in, in the future. So I just wanted oh. to know if there's anything that you'd oh, like to leave oh, us with. Just, you know, just uh, complimenting on what you said, you know, yes, everyone was sitting, but some of our brothers and sisters lost themselves in the tunnel vision of this idea of lack, you know, need more, need more, need more to provide to self and to family because there's something inside so hollow that has forgotten our connection to what is truly important, our connection to the great mystery, our connection to, to self and to God. So we just need to be compassionate to those that are fighting a war that we have no idea about, like everyone is you know, compassionate to those people that lost their way and, and help them do better by sharing this message. And so join us at Aniwa in this very powerful blue month, uh, blue moon month, which means two full moons in a month and also means it is the most powerful month for spiritual work. It's been dedicated to light workers for thousands of years since before Christ. So there's many, many people doing ceremony all through this month. And 13 elders of Aniwa will join. And for the first time ever, they will do like they do in the gathering. They will be holding sacred ceremony in their communities during those four days. So while one elder is presenting, all the other elders are going to be in their, sac in their ceremonies holding space for this healing and for this transformation to arrive to everyone. So I'm super excited. Thank you for having me and I hope everyone can enjoy. Yeah, thank you so, so much. I also have some background noise here, but um, I could hear you and I'm so thrilled and I'm so, um, I'm so proud of, of, yeah. of you and of us to kind of well, make this that make this amazing thing happen, you know, against all odds. And I know we were really looking forward to having the live event this year in Massachusetts. And, you know, it breaks my heart that that can't happen right now, but this is as good as it gets, you know, given the circumstances and it comes at a perfect time because we all need hope and we all need faith and we all need to trust and learn and, and, you know, eyes forward as they say. So thank you so much, uh, Vivian, and I'll speak to you soon, my dear. And um, oh, Jack, just for everybody, the link is in the bio. Um, I'll also leave it underneath here, I think. I don't know how to do these things, technology things, but yeah, come buy the ticket, join us this um, this weekend. And if you can't afford the ticket, then write, you know, write a, write the reasons why, and then um, you know maybe we'll give you a scholarship if you feel that that's good as well. And uh, yeah, the main thing is just to kind of get this message out there, you know, at this time when there's so much, um, so much uh, noise around about indigenous people, so many people kind of, you know, taking on this cause, you know, these guys have been working with the indigenous for years and years and years, building relationships of trust, relationships of reciprocity and really friendships with these guys, you know, Vivian and Rudy, they study with the elders. They don't just like go off and like, you know, do, do, sort of do the, the thing of like doing these, these, these cultural gatherings. These guys are students of these, these amazing teachers. Um, so yeah, I think it's just really good and necessary to get this depth and this level of, um, of integrity in this work, in this message, in, in this world right now. So tell your friends, join us. And thank you so much, Vivian. I'll speak to you soon, my dear. So nice to see you.